Uh, hello again. Uh, finally, here is your top 10 of Jushin Thunder Liger. I'm sure this is a familiar name to most. I mean, he's been all over, hasn't he? You know, he is native to Japan, frequent WCW appearances, and some Mexican appearances over the last few years as well. So, definitely a familiar name, and is definitely up there for one of the best junior heavyweights of all time. And I'd say that the this list has additions that every fan can relate to. You know, there are interpromotional matches, there's Liger against heavyweights. There's only one of those, but it's a very, very um, worthwhile addition. And, of course, there are the familiar, um, famous junior matches on top of that. So I'd say that everyone should be able to find something that they enjoy here. So, let's get to it then. At number 10, I have Liger versus El Samurai from the 30th of April, 1992. Although actually this one is a bit, it's a bit of an unsatisfying placement for me because on one hand I do think this match is quite overrated in the sense that this does get put in contention for the best Liger match ever and I just do not understand that at all. So I'd like to be able to say that, hey, you know, this is overrated. I can name 10 Liger matches better than this one, but being fair, I can't do that because there are matches that I like more, but at the same time they lack the great memorable moments that this match does have. You know, this is one of those matches where it makes it because of the great moments that are spread out throughout the match. It doesn't make it so much because of consistency. Um, what's the problem with the match though? Easy comebacks. They are the thing that holds this match down for me. It's a constant source of annoyance. Still, this is an aggressive Liger performance, the legs of which you don't often see. And some of the submissions are just so intense here and it does have a great, great finish. So. I don't mind it making the list so much because it does have a lot of positives to it, but just keep in mind that some of the higher placing matches on this list um, don't have the same great moments, but they are consistently consistently more fun. Um, we haven't got there yet though because number 9 is another great moments yet inconsistent match, in my opinion, and that is Liger vs. Otani from the 9th of February 1997. On the one hand here, this does fall into some of the pitfalls that of Junior's wrestling. You know, Liger doesn't sell as much as you'd like. They could have built more effectively to fewer near falls. But on the other hand, it's not mindless back and forth. That's the key to this one. Otani delivers a performance that incorporates a determined fighting spirit disposition. You, you can see that from many of the spots they work here. Such as when, you know, Liger was on the top turnbuckle and Otani just refuses to stay down. He keeps getting knocked down and he keeps getting back up. That was great stuff, and you know, Otani taking Liger strikes and hitting that great balance between never giving up and never selling. Those are great moments, and that's what holds the match together for me and prevents the flaws from killing it. Um, it does have it doesn't have the best flow in the world. It does have enough downtime for you to notice it, but I think in the end, you know, the positives here are strong enough to give this a recommendation. So that's Liger versus Otani. They have plenty of matches, or plenty of interactions throughout the later half of the 90s for you to watch and judge how well they did. Um, now we get to this match. This match is something that I'm excited about. Um, Liger vs. Dick Togo from 96. Number 8 on my list. Remember what I said about a match that lacks the great moments to make it famous but ha has got just about perfect pacing? This is the match right here. Um, one of the few matches I've watched recently where I can cannot point to any downtime as being a flaw. They pack all the familiar structural elements of a match into 16 minutes and they keep it very focused. Um, perfectly timed control segments, arm work that makes sense, and big spots that are made to feel important. So there you go. Togo's comeback attempts, they aren't all that great, um, but they didn't really hinder the match at all because they weren't successful attempts. So, you know, I would say... This was actually perfect in its own way, you know, it, they can't get, it can't get a perfect rating because it just doesn't have those big moments that puts a match over the top, but it is very easy to watch. I really can't see any significant reason to criticise it, so, you know, there's that, it's just kind of like a match that is perfect in its own way, like I said, number 8 on the list. At number 7, I'm going to go with Liger and Tanaka Minolu versus Kikuchi Suyoshi and Kanemaru Yoshinobu from... New Japan on the 29th of August 2002. Um, this is the first time I'm mentioning the NOAA vs New Japan interpromotional matches of 2002 and even though this one, this one isn't as perfectly paced as the one that is higher up on this list, Liger has a much has a more interesting partner in this one. You know, Tanaka is the guy who you're in exchange with him 
it's a bit of a stalemate and then out of nowhere he can lock in an arm submission and you're in deep deep trouble he was just great at that here and um he carries a lot of interest throughout the body of the match when he does that you know adds more intrigue to the segments where kikuchi is just getting worked over you know it helps the es it also helps the escalated energy that materializes for the finish stretch you know the only thing that is more dangerous than tanaka's um, arm submissions are Kikuchi's elbows, and they were dangerous in 2002, make no mistake about it. Um, Liger had great body language, actually, in these interpromotional matches. Um, it does feel limiting that you can't see more of his facial expressions behind the mask, but his body language is good, and it does play a part in making these matches great. So a lot of credit to this one, but it is not the best match of its kind. You'll want to hear about that one, so you know, keep watching. Uh, at number six, I'm going to go with... We're moving away from New Japan now and heading to Michinoku Pro. It's Liger, Gran Hamada, and Gran Naniwa versus Takamichinoku, Funaki, and Dick Toho on the 18th of August, 1996. If you're in any way familiar with uh, Michinoku Pro, you know that a lot of their best matches were produced in 1996. If you're in any way familiar with Lucharest, style at all you'll want to watch this match you know this has all the sound execution and fun six-man tag exchanges that you're used to in modern day dragon gate and it does manage to feel spontaneous rather than rehearsed at t on top of that at the same time so you know it's impressive stuff it's short it's focused they pack a lot of action into it and all the interactions with liger are very interesting you know because at, at this time liger was this big famous star in the biggest promotion in the country whereas michinoka pro was just independent so um I really, don't ha I really don't have a lot to say about this one. I mean, it's a fun six-man sprint that you would hope for. Nothing they do really blows away expectations, which is why it's not even higher on the list. But it's definitely worth watching. Um, Michinoku Pro six-man tag. At number five, going back to New Japan, we have Liger and Fujinami Tatsumi versus Kitahara Koki and Tenryu Genichiro from the 3rd of August, 1993. We don't have a lot of Liger versus heavyweights, you know, understandably so. Liger was a big star in his own right that they'd be anxious to protect. Even though, you know, juniors can win fan approval by looking aggressive in defeats against heavyweights, so they could have done more of this stuff. Obviously, in the end, Liger didn't need it, but as a fan, you just want to see it because some of the, you know, Liger Tenryu exchanges here are just really something special, just really something um, worth seeing. So much energy, so much hate. This was New Japan versus WAR. Um, you you improve Kitahara's role here, and you have something really special. You know the thing about it was Kitahara was had the look and the demeanor of a complete jackass. So it seemed he was wearing street clothes, and every time he involved himself in the match, he got booed hard. So it seemed that it seemed odd to me that Liger and Fujinami spent more time working over him than vice versa. You know Kitahara could have sustained his heat for so much longer if he had been allowed to have control. You know, this was, this was only a short little 11 minute match, so they didn't have to worry about killing his heat at all. You know, because, and because they didn't do that, because they didn't let him um, kind of run the match in his little segments, this has more dry moments than you, you would want for a match of this length. But, you know, once Liger and Tenryu get in there, they make it worth it. You know, Liger is a great underdog. Tenryu is great at what he does. Um, and this is a great match. Just a simple, a simple decision would have made it a classic. So I'm not kind of um, a big fan of that. But there you go. Um, you want to see Liger against heavyweight. This is the, this is what you're going to get, and it's really good stuff. So that was number five. And at number four, we're going to go with Liger versus Sasuke from the first J Cup on the 16th of April, '94. So everyone should be familiar with this. I've talked about it before. I've reviewed that show. You can watch that. Um, and just to add a bit, you know, the early mat work here, it's better than I remember it. Um, probably because I appreciate good mat work more now than I did when I made that review first. Um, Liger was always sound on the mat, though. His biggest problem was not varying it up enough. You know, there was, there was a set number of things that he would do that felt mandatory in each match. And as a result, they were, very, they were never important and very predictable. Um, the surfboard's a good example. You know, he did the surfboard all the time. 
but he didn't treat it like a signature move where there's a struggle over whether or not he's actually going to lock it in. And it was always at the start of match two, so it's obviously not going to be lead to the finish at all. So in this match, though, he changes the sh he changes the surfboard to a dragon sleeper variation, and it looks genuinely excruciating. You know, it really it really did help the early control segment on Sasuke. Um, Sasuke's comeback's a little too easy, but his dives do have that desperate factor about them. He has to put himself through hell to win this. And when Liger gets back in control, he appears more urgent as well. To put away this guy who, who's so tough and keeps kicking out, um, you have to go through hell. Which is why I still dislike the finish of this match so much. I mean, the botch, it plays into how much punishment Liger was dishing out up to that point. It's perfectly fine, you know. So having Sasuke just get the flash pin didn't suit the match at all. I still don't like that ending, but I do like the match a lot still. So, and I, I'm sure many have pe people have seen this already. But if you haven't, then watch it. Um, so let's move on to the top three, the upper echelon of this list, starting with Liger versus Sano Naoki from the 10th of August, 1989. Um, Sano, you should know, he still wrestles in Noah as Sano Takuma. And this match... No hyperbole for me, this has possibly the best arm selling in any match ever. It's a little weird actually because Sano's attack on the arm isn't anything special at all. I mean, it's it's very ordinary and if it was a more concentrated attack, then honestly this could have been five stars. But it's not and, you know, but at the same time, Liger isn't overselling because um, Liger is not reduced to the same helpless state that he will be in their future match. Um, but he's still very much of a threat. And you're not you're not left thinking that he has no chance because especially once Sonam bleeds, um, that just creates this big fight atmosphere, complete urgency. It's just so surreal though to watch the arm always hang limp. Um, even when Liger's not on offense that, at that moment, it's always just hanging limp, ha playing a part in his body language. And when he's on offense, it just plays in so well. There's a superplex spot to the outside that just has to be seen to be believed how he pulls it off. And even though Sano didn't Ask him to ask for such dramatic arm selling. He uses it as well, and every time he locks in an arm bar, you're like, you're on the edge of your seat, just you know wondering what's going to happen. So, great match, and it's not even their best. So definitely want to um, wait to see what their best is. Um, but before, before we get to their best, though, we're going to go back to Noah versus New Japan. This one happened in Noah on the 17th of February 2002, and it's Liger and Inoue Watalo versus. Kikuchi Siyoshi and Kanemaru Yoshinobu. So much hate, so much passion. This is just great stuff. I said earlier that Tanaka was a more interesting partner for Liger in this type of match. This match is better because the pacing is just perfect and there's very little downtime. But there are some moments early on between Kanemaru and Inoue that are a little dry compared to what Liger and Kikuchi do. Um, take nothing away from... Kanemaru and Inoue though, they both tapped into the energy of the finish stretch and did their part to make this great, but Tanaka's standard act is just a bit more interesting, so that, that, that could have made this a perfect match. Still, just great pacing, great underdog moments from Kikuchi, and he Liger in all his glory. You know, the crowd, the crowd is hugely into it, what more can be said about this one? Watch this, it's got all the elements you'd want from an interpromotional match, you won't be sorry you watch this one, so that's number two. And number one. Number one, the best match Liger's ever had. Again, we're going to versus Sano on the 31st of January 1990. This is, a, this is actually almost a one-man show, and that one man is Liger. Because Sano is actually quite generic in the dominant role. And that's been brought up as a reason that prevents this match from holding classic status. But this is what I wrote on the forum when I first watched this match about six months ago. Um, I wrote, of course Sano is generic. But the only time it was noticeable in a negative way was at the very start, where it seems like Liger just strolls into the baby face in peril role without any attempt to make it convincing. The rest of the time, I saw Sano as nothing more than a vacant medium that Liger was using to channel this incredible baby face energy, and I was perfectly fine with that. So it's basically got the same problem, the same weird setup that the last match did. Where Liger, the last match, Liger was selling the arm like it's been destroyed when it wasn't destroyed, uh, but he draws you into his performance anyway. This time, Liger was bleeding, his mask was coming off, 
everything bad was happening to him and it kind of happened without warning you know you, you kind of wondered how did this happen how did he get so how did he get to, to be in such a dangerous position but you know once it happened you're just you just want to see the end result that was how good it was those there's, there's, there's great dives here that are used for really effective transitioning and all the big meaningful spots in the finish this is just great stuff it's a liger baby face performance you just have to see and that's just it that's the best match not five stars because of the weird setup but um definitely the best liger match i have ever seen so that is that list finished that's liger i hope people are enjoying these and getting good use out of them i don't think i'll be able to make another one of these by the end of the year i like making sure of it everything you know I want to make sure to see everything and then deciding on an order of the matches. It just it, it, it takes a lot of time and I'm not going to be able to have it. But you can still make suggestions for who the next subject of the list should be. I don't have any high priorities at the moment. Um, I have this idea for another series um, to watch the most famous and acclaimed matches from the WE and WCW and see if they hold up. You know, it would just be interesting to me to answer questions like, okay, did Angle and Benoit really have more downtime than people that people think in those matches was Bret Hart as predictable a worker as I think he is are the WD style of hardcore matches entertaining on the second watch that kind of stuff you know it would, it would be interesting and that way I could watch one match every week and have a video up every week which would be nice uh, if I had my way I would do the thing where I upload the match and have me talking over the background but I don't want to encourage the wrath of the copyright police so I probably won't do that I'll just settle for the way I've been doing it up to now and if there's anything else you want me to talk about uh, then let me know I will do I will you know look at your request but I will only do it if I find the topic interesting that's just what how it'll be so that's that I hope they get a good response to all of this and hopefully you'll see me put a famous match to the test um, next week so I will see you then